This? I am terrible at this. I have no idea what I'm doing, and odds are, if you're watching this video, you don't either. You absolute loser. But when people fail at a goal, when people can't reach the thing that they set out to do, they need accomplishment. And oftentimes, the best way to get that accomplishment is with extremely violent video games. The reason? Catharsis. I don't want to just accomplish something, I want to accomplish something in the biggest spectacle possible. With a whole lot of evidence all over the walls of exactly what my prowess is. The bloodier a game is, the more capable you feel. And these five games are how I got into violent flash games, and how I never played them again. The premise with Skull Kid is you're an office worker that got really pissed off and just decided to murk everybody. There's not a whole lot of underlying plot or dialogue to what you do. You got a chainsaw, you got a gun, you're using it on unsuspecting office workers because they, for whatever reason, have wronged you in some way. I'm assuming you're justified in your actions, but to be honest with you, a lot of these early Flash games were very bare bones when it came to your real motivations. Now this guy reminds me so much of the main character of Falling Down. Has a bad day, right? One of those days where you're just like, I, I can't deal with it anymore. I, I really just cannot deal with it anymore. And you break. Now it did have some novel game mechanics for the time, mainly cover shooting. Gears of War was super big, and the era of stop and pop when it came to shooting was a new concept at the time. The timing of everything is like so satisfying when you get it just right, even though there's like no feedback before you actually kill them, but you know, for the most part, it's pretty good. A decent entrance into the genre. Pico School is a game about school shootings. Living in Montpelier, Vermont, believe it or not, we had our fair share of scares. I distinctly remember one day, uh, some kid, and I didn't see a weapon or anything like that, he did supposedly threaten to shoot at the school. I busted into that school office like, hey, listen, I heard about what's happening, I'm leaving, I'm not getting ventilated by Johnny Two Shoes over there, it ain't gonna happen. Now, obviously nothing happened, but the sentiment at that time was school shootings were really serious thing, and this game satirizes and pokes fun at that fact. I'll be honest with you, you kill a lot of six-year-olds in this game, and not only do you kill them, but you kill them in, in pretty much the most brutal way imaginable by just filling them full of lead. There are six-year-olds that you can decide to kill or not to kill, and oftentimes there's no real reward for doing it one way or the other, but the fact of the matter is, this is a game where the majority of the gameplay is killing children. <laughs> and it's not just that, but you see dozens upon dozens of kids' bodies scattered all over this place, which gives this game now a really weird and disturbing and unsettling vibe to it because just the concept of it. Like imagine you didn't see any of the gameplay, right? Just imagine this concept. A giant tower of exploding dead children. Not exactly the most pleasant thing. A game like this could never be made today. I'm telling you, there's no way any game developer, either independent or mainstream, is gonna make a game where the main prospect is murdering infants. It's not gonna happen, dog. And if you don't believe me, take a look for yourself. Has there been a game like it? No! Divine Intervention was one of my favorite games growing up, all because of the damage model. The smoothness of the animation was one thing. I had never seen a game that moved so fluidly before. This thing was at legitimately 60 FPS and the art style looks so high quality, man. It was so gorgeous just to look at. Then, of course, we got the damage model. Now, previously to this, Flash games didn't really have a whole lot when it came to damage models. If you shot an enemy in a game, they either killed over or died, or they had like a single bullet wound in their head, like Madness Interactive. But with Divine Intervention, there were layers of flesh. The more that you shot at a part of a body, the more layers of that flesh would peel away, showing face and skin and blood and bone. It was unbelievably gruesome for the time, and it was awesome. Yeah, the majority of your enemies are six-year-olds. <laughs> in fact, I would say 80% of the things that you kill in this game are angry six-year-old demons that are trying to kill you. My god almighty, th this trend of murdering children in these old Flash games was a lot more prevalent than I remember. You don't really think about that when you're a kid. You're just like, oh, uh, here's a fun game I can play, and you kind of self-identify with the character of the priest. Worth playing. Torture Simulator is where I stopped playing violent Flash games, because at this point, they stopped being games. All this really is, and if we're going back to the damage model aspect of it, is torturing somebody. <laughs> this is not a video game. There's no fun to be had here. There's no challenge. There's no objective. All you're doing is trying to make this guy suffer as much as possible in, oh god, way too much detail, man. Every individual bone and joint that you cut off will like spurt little bits of blood and like even dribble down the skin as you chop away at it was harrowing to me. When I was 10 years old, I did not think this was cool. I didn't think it was enjoyable. I felt sick to my stomach playing that game then, and even now, ah, oh God, I, mm, 
Ah, the point of violence in video games is to feel like you overcame great odds. Like the enemy you were going against was so dangerous that you had to do everything in your power to stop them. But there's none of that in Torture Simulator. All you're doing is being a sadistic freak and just hurting this person for no reason. But this wasn't the game that made me quit. That went to Interactive Buddy. Now, I like this little guy. I think he's cute. I think he's adorable. But once again, it goes back into the aspect of just hurting somebody for the sake of hurting somebody. Now, that was one thing with Torture Simulator. That was bad enough. And you may be wondering, look at how violent that is, and look how there's barely any blood in this. Why would you be more offended by this? And the answer is emotion. <laughs> when you hit this cute little blob, he cries. He emotes. He feels the pain that you're giving him. Whereas with Torture Simulator, you don't really get that. I mean, this guy barely emotes whatsoever, so whether he's even aware of what's going on with him, you don't know. But in this one, you are vehemently aware and you're actively rewarded for it. Quit right then and there. I like video games. I think they're cool. <laughs>